Welcome back to Telltale Books. I'm continuing my Clifford D. Simek series with his second published story called Mutiny on Mercury. Simek was, was pretty closely contemporary with Manley Wade Wellman. Manley Wade Wellman published, started publishing science fiction in 1931. Clement, Simek also published his first science fiction story in December 1931, World of the Red Sun. Mutiny on Mercury wasn't published until March of 1932, but we're still talking about Wonder Stories, which is the same, the same magazine that Manly Wade Wellman published in. And at this time it was being edited by none other than Hugo Gernsback. So the, um, I read Mutiny on Mercury in Grotto of the Dancing Deer and other stories. This is part of a very long series published by Open Road Media. Um, they just published a new one of these, the num number 13 in the series, um, just in June, and I bought that one. I, f I forget the title of it. They're coming out with volume number 14 this month, July, I always already have that on pre-order, um, called Epilogue and Other Stories. So this one is volume four of the complete short stories, the complete short fiction of Clifford D. Simak. Really, really cool that they did this. Um, I wish it were hardcover, but they're pretty nice trade paperbacks and easy to, easy to open and read in. I do like them. And that, and they also they didn't publish in order of publication. They kind of mix things all up. So uh, you get some of his last stories in every volume in, in this series. You get some of his last stories mixed in with some of his earliest stories. So mutiny on Mercury. As I said, it was published in Wonder Stories in March of 1932. And by the way, yes, you can get the, a copy of that issue as a PDF for free online. A guy named Tom, forget his last name. Remember, I'm really bad with last name, with, with remembering names. But Tom is a sole Earth man to survive an uprising from Martians on the planet Mercury. Okay, on the planet Mercury, along the, it, it, it was long believed that Mercury always kept the same face to the sun. We now know that's not true, but it was long thought that Mercury was like the moon and always kept the same face toward the sun. So you had this extremely hot, bright side, this extremely cold night side, and this twilight area where the temperature might actually be livable. But of course, no atmosphere. In this story, there's very little thin atmosphere. But they build these domes. Earth builds these domes all along in this twilight area. And the domes are, are for mining. They're doing mining underneath the domes. And they're using um, well, primarily Martians, but there's, there's moon men, there's Saturnians, there's, there's people from all over the solar system, but the story mainly concerns the moon men or lunarians and the Martians. They're being used as slaves to do the work at these um, mining domes on Mercury. And they decide they want to be free. So this, of course, means mutiny, rising up against the Earthmen and trying to force their freedom. Well, they have a well-planned plan, and they nearly succeed, except for Tom. He survives and gets away. And, of course, he being the Earth Man in the story, he single-handedly 
defeats all of the Martian and Lunarian mutineers and saves the day. Typical 1930s space opera. There's very little in the way of world building. There's very little characterization. There's very little about Martian or Lunarian um, culture. You do get descriptions of them. They're kind of weird. You put some imagination there. This story isn't isn't like your typical John Campbell story where the hero saves the world by the application of intelligence and, and the invention of some kind of super science solution to the problem which allows him to save the day and, and save the world. This guy saves the world by pure dumb luck. Um, he happens to be in the right place at the right time, the right things go wrong for the Martians and he's able to wipe them out. And personally, I found myself rooting for the Martians. I mean, they're the oppressed ones. They're the ones being enslaved. But the story treats them like they're terrible for wanting their freedom. And paints that as the bad guy. I don't like that at all. So I was really disappointed in this story. And, and you know, I know Simak writes better than this. Eventually. At this time, not so much. Um, I guess it, before bothering to read this story, go and read the Manly Wade Wellman story. Um, number three of Manly Wade Wellman's complete read, uh, When Planets Clashed. I don't recommend that one either, but it's actually better than, than this um, Simak story. I'm sorry, I, I really love the, the writing of Clifford Simak, and I know he goes on to do some great stuff, but this is just not something I could, in good conscience, advise you to waste your time on. This is a pretty bad story. And the introduction to the story does say that this was actually written before World of the Red Sun, so this was actually his first story, but for whatever reason he didn't find somebody to buy it until after World of the Red Sun was published. You know, and uh, the introduction does say it was rejected by astounding stories, rejected by amazing stories. And I can see why. It's, it's just not that good of a story. So Wonder Stories should have passed too. <clears throat> and with that, we call it a day on that story and the next Clifford Simak story is called The Voice in the Void. I will read that and report to you all about it, good or bad, soon. This is another another one of these cases where I know Simak becomes a great writer, but at this point, his second published story, you're not seeing it yet. You're not seeing the greatness that will come out of him. It will happen. It's just going to take a little time to get there. Uh, unlike Wellman, Cl Clifford Simak definitely gets there by before 1940. Um, when he was writing for John Campbell, he was writing some really excellent stories like City. So that's a wrap on that one. I hope you'll join me for more of these. I promise you the stories will get better. I'm just not, I just can't promise when, as most of his 1930s stories I've never read. Um, but I hope you'll like and, and subscribe to us and come back for more. I've got more Simic, more Ellison, more Manly Wade Wellman, more J.G. Ballard, more Greg Bear, um, more Philip Dick. We got Emily will be joining me for more Philip Dick coming up soon. So lots more, and of course, Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, lots more to come. And I hope you'll see me in those videos.